I am taking a look at the safety and child passenger seating of the 2012 Kia Sorento Sport Utility Vehicle at carseatblog.com. Here's a look at the exterior, very sporty design. For 2012, Kia has added the 2.4 liter GDI powertrain. That gives very impressive fuel economy in front wheel drive trim, 22 city, 32 highway, 25 overall. That's very good for the midsize SUV class for anything that is not a hybrid. We'll take a look at the inside as well. This is a seven passenger vehicle with the option for a third row uh, that is included in the model that I have here. For crash tests, the Sorento received a top safety pick from the IIHS for 2011. I would expect that to carry over to 2012, but you'll have to check to make sure that is the case. From the government, in the new NHTSA crash testing, it received four stars overall. That's pretty good. It received five stars in all the side impact tests, a five-star driver rating in the front seat, and the only blemish a four-star rating for the passenger in the front seat, but still pretty good. And uh, the overall rating four stars overall is good as well. The interior, nice. Um, leather interior in this model was an option. Nice round gauges, everything pretty much easy to find and easy to see. A touch screen for your navigation system and Sirius radio. That all works very well. No complaints in pairing up my Bluetooth phone or streaming audio. So uh, pretty nice overall on the inside. Let's take a look at the seating, especially for child safety seats. The second row has three seats. The outboard seating positions do have the lower latch system with the bars that are somewhat tucked inside the gap here, as you can see under the indicator. Not too hard to access, but not particularly easy either. The main difficulty will be that there is some crossover between the latch and the seat belts for the middle and the outboard positions. You can see the seat belt for the center, the latch is a little bit over uh, on the opposite side. So if you're putting in two adjacent seats, there could be some conflicts and you'll have to choose carefully if you're going to attempt a three across seating for child seats here because of the relatively narrow second row. With careful selection, you may be able to do it. For example, choosing a narrow booster for an older child like this bubble bum booster and a narrow convertible like the Sunshine Kids or Diono Radian models uh, may allow you to do that. I've installed a Radian XT model in the center, which works nicely not only because it fits between the front seats to allow the driver and passenger a little bit more legroom up front, but also because it is narrow enough to where it will allow the seat behind the front passenger to fold to allow access to the third row. If you have three car seats across um, and you have one installed in that far seat or have a wider one in the middle seat here, you would not be able to gain access as you will see shortly. Otherwise, uh, the head restraints are not particularly large profile. They shouldn't cause too much problems for taller convertibles, combination seats, or boosters. Uh, they can be removed in a two-step process. There's apparently a pin that inserts to pop those out if needed. There are top tether anchors for all three second row seats. And these head restraints are all adjustable in the second row. So you can see also in the middle, there's an adjustable head restraint as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at access to the third row and some of the other features. There is a good spot under the leg of the front passenger seat to attach a tether accessory strap if you have a seat like this Radian or a Britax convertible or one from Combi that allows you to use the tether rear facing so you will be able to accomplish that without too much difficulty. There's some sharp edges under the seat so be careful but otherwise um, the seat belt stocks are not particularly short and they are flexible that shouldn't cause too much difficulty for getting in most child seats so there shouldn't be a huge array of compatibility issues unless you are trying to do the adjacent installations or three across like I mentioned. Access to the third row is accomplished in a two-step process, unlike many of the other mid-size models. You flip up a lever at the top of the seat, and then you pull a strap on the back, 
and that actually lifts up the back of the seat. If you have a seat in the middle, you're going to have to move that out of the way first before folding, as I mentioned. But then you can lift this whole seat up and it pivots to allow access to the third row. The head restraint folds automatically to give access. So not the easiest procedure, but it does give a fairly wide aisle once you have accomplished it. And you will be able to allow the kids to load that way. The third row seat doesn't have a whole lot of leg room, and that is because the second row seat does not adjust front to back like many captain's chairs in minivans or in some of the midsize SUVs. So you really have no adjustability for leg room in, leg room in either the second or third row. There's just enough for an older child in a booster or for a teen who's in a seat belt or perhaps for a small adult on a short trip. But beyond that, there's not going to be a whole lot of leg room back in that third row. John is enjoying his hot cocoa on a cold Chicago November day. How's it going, John? He's demonstrating one of the wider high back boosters, the Brytax Frontier 85 SICT. It fits very well in the third row. How's your hot cocoa, John? Awesome, show us your Yoda mug. No. No, oh, do not. There is no try. Awesome. So John's uh, showing us that uh, kids in boosters can be seated back there, and that is the best use of that third row seat because there are no top tether anchors in that third row to install a forward-facing seat. Ideally, uh, you can install seats that are forward-facing with a five-point harness without a tether, but it is not ideal. So the best use of that is going to be for boosters for older kids or for kids who are in seat belts due to the legroom issue. Uh, smaller kids who are using a backless booster may encounter the problem that we've seen in a couple of SUVs that have a forward mounted shoulder belt and that can cause the shoulder belt to be in front of their chest if they're using a backless booster. So that may be a problem for kids four to five years old or those small of stature and you may want to watch out for that as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the room behind the third row seat. It is very small. This is one of the smallest midsize SUVs, so it is not going to be as roomy as most of the other models in the midsize market. So there isn't a whole lot of room if you have all three rows of seating up, as you can see here. These seats are almost back at the back hatch. Fortunately, you can fold down either side independently to give you a little extra room. If you did have car seats in a three across situation, you could actually load an older child through the back hatch and climb over to one seat or the other if you wanted to use half of the third row and then the other half for storage or cargo. Or you can, of course, fold both halves down. So overall, it is a little bit smaller. That's going to be the biggest compromise compared to other midsize SUVs, both a little bit in width and especially in length. You're going to lose legroom in the third row and in the second row because they are fixed and not adjustable for those second row seats. But you should be able to accommodate an infant seat without losing too much legroom for the front passenger if you prefer to put it right behind the passenger. So the compromise being room compared to the other midsize SUVs, but the advantages being relatively low price, relatively good EPA fuel economy numbers, and generally slightly improved handling uh, compared to some of the larger models. So that is the 2012 Kia Sorento Sport Utility Vehicle at carseatblog.com.